first thing we have to understand is what is a sequence? So we use the letter N to represent the position in a sequence. For example, if we're observing the fifth term in a sequence of numbers, then N is five, yeah? So for the following sequences, just find the first four terms, yeah? So three N, the first term would mean N is one, right? So the first term would mean N is one, right? So you'd be substituting N equals one into three N, yeah? Well, 3n means 3 times n, so if n is 1, 3 times 1 is just 3. So the second term, n is 2, so 3 times 2 is 6. The third term, n is 3, 3 times 3 is 9. The fourth term, the n value would be 4, yeah, 3 times 4, 12. The second one, the first term, n would be 1, 6 times 1 is 6. The second term, n is 2. 6 times 2, 12. Third term, n is 3, 6 times 3, 18. We're going to discover the patterns as well with some of these um, uh, nth terms. Yeah? The fourth term, n is 4, 6 times 4, 24. Now, a little bit more calculation, but 2n plus 1. So the first term, remember you have to do it in all, the correct order. So it'll be 2 times 1 plus 1, yeah, which is 3. So when n is 2, we have 2 times 2 plus 1, so we've got 5. And then the last one, we have 2 times 4 plus 1, and we've got 9 there, yeah? Good. So this is how you find the nth term for linear sequences. Now I'm going to show you how most teachers may have taught it to you, but I'm going to show you a lot of different way which helps us answer the grade 8 and grade 9 questions. Because what you may have taught in, in school may not allow you to answer the hardest questions in GCSE. And my role as your teacher is to make sure that you can answer the hardest questions in GCSEs. Yeah? So you may have to um, change the way you think about linear sequences a little bit. But I'm going to show you first um, how it works in the most basic way. So find the m term of the following sequence. Now, common question, the first questions we need to answer is the first thing is what does the common difference tell us? So guys, what does the common difference between each term tell us? So we're adding six each time, right? Now, if we're adding six each time, if we're adding six each time, like we said before, is that because we're adding six, we know the coefficient of n is six n, right? So we know the coefficient of n is six. The second thing we're saying is because we know it's 6n, remember what we said in the previous slide, when we saw 4n, we're looking at the four times tables, right? Because it's 6n, we know we're talking about the six times tables. Now the six times tables are 6, 12, 18, 24, etc., right? Now look at the sequence in question. Look at the sequence in question. We want 7, 13, 19, 25. You can see that this sequence is just one more than the six times table, yeah? So the sequence in question is one more than the six times tables, yeah? So that means if the six times tables are 6n, we want one more than the six times tables. And then you can sub in n is 1, n is 2, n is 3, etc. And you'll see it gives you 7, 13, 19, 25. So, the very easy way to find what the nth term is of a linear sequence is you first write down what it's going up in. That's the coefficient of n. Then you just work out the difference. That's all. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you're learning something, then hit that like button and comment down below to let me know what you want to learn next. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Like I said, if you want to do the hardest GCSE questions, you need to learn the formal method of finding a linear sequence. And it's really easy, trust me. 
I just have to kind of delete what you might have been taught in school a little bit, you know, with the find the zeroth term and stuff. We kind of need to delete that. We understand how a linear sequence works. Now we're going to really understand how a linear sequence works. We're going to do those grade eight questions. We're going to do those grade nine questions and we're going to smash it. Yeah. So what is the formal method? I do not like the standard GCSE method of finding the nth term since it doesn't help us tackle the more difficult problems where we're asked to find the general sequence given random terms, not just the first few. So what we've been doing so far is I've always given you the first four numbers, right? But what happens if I give you the third number in the sequence and the hundredth number in the sequence? What do you do then? Well, we can't find the common difference very easily, right? between the third number and the hundredth number, you've got to calculate how many differences there are in between and then students make so many mistakes. So I'm going to show you the method which we would use to do it really easily. We have our term numbers, first term, second term, third term, and we're going to form a relationship between the term number and the term generally. We always call the first term A. Now remember, we're not going to do numbers here specifically because we're going to generate uh, a formula. Think of the formula a bit like the quadratic formula, but it's for linear sequences. Now we use A because A is the first letter in the alphabet. So we like to call the first term A. Yeah. So like in the previous question, the first term was 5 here. The first term is 16 and the first term here was 0 0.4. But we're generalizing it and calling it the letter A. Then we say the difference between the terms, I think you lot can guess what letter I'll use, D. Yeah, A plus D. Which means the second term is just whatever A is plus D. Whatever A is plus D. A, we haven't added another A, right? So it's going to be A plus 2D. Yeah, we're doing D plus another D, which is just A plus 2D, isn't it? Yeah, so it's definitely A plus. Now, look back to what I've highlighted in green. If it was A plus ND, it would mean that this number and this number would be the same. But it's 4 and 3. It's 4 and 3. 3 and 2. 2 and 1. So it's not A plus ND because then the green highlights would say the same number. What is it actually? How are you going from four to three? How are you going from three to two? Two to one. You're doing A plus M minus one D. Wherever the number is on over here, you subtract one and that number goes in front of D. So if it's four, you subtract one, so it'll be three D. Because it's 3, you subtract 1, it'll be 2D. Because it's 2, you subtract 1, it's just D. When you have 1, when you subtract 1, you get 0. That's why there's 0D. Yeah? So, guys, if I was to just ask you, yeah, if I was to ask you, what would the 10th term be? If the number on the top was 10, what would it say underneath? So number on the top was 10. What would it say underneath? A plus 9D. Good. A plus 9D. Yeah. This is very, very important because in exams, the hard questions, they're going to give you the fifth term and they're going to give you the hundredth term. And when you think fifth term, you think A plus 4D. When I say what's the hundredth term, you're going to say A plus 99D. And it forms a connection. Because remember, A is the first term. So if they say, what's the fifth term? You say A plus 4D. You found that connection to the first term. So I need you guys to read A plus M minus 1D in your head a hundred times and never forget it, please. Yeah? And you're going to see how we apply it to future questions. Yeah? The last thing we need to do is quadratic sequences. Now, I have to make, I'm going to give you a method which I think is the easiest way to address quadratic sequences. <clears throat> There's so many different methods out there. I'm giving you what I think is the easiest, yeah? So, as we have seen with linear sequences, 
they are in the form of a n plus b. Now that's similar to that of the equation of a line, y equals mx plus c. a n plus b for linear sequences is the same as basically equations of lines, y equals mx plus c. Now, quadratic sequences will be in the form of a quadratic equation, a n squared plus b n plus c. This derives some simple rules for finding the nth term. So, here's the question. Given that a quadratic is of the form a n squared plus b n plus c, write down the first four terms in terms of a, b, and c, and hence derive some rules to finding these constants. Let's see what happens when n is 1. When n is 1, 1 squared is just 1, so we're just left with a plus bn, where if n is 1, then you're just left with b, then it's always just a plus c at the end. So when n is 2, 2 squared is 4, we have 4a. bn, if n is 2, we have 2b, and then we have plus c at the end. Subbing in 3, a n squared, so if n is 3, 3 squared is 9, a plus 3b plus c. And then the last one, subbing in 4, 4 squared is 16a plus bn, n is 4, b plus c. Now, remember with linear sequences, we're looking at what we have to add, yeah? We're going to do the same thing. We need to work out what do we need to add to go from term to term. So guys, a plus b plus c, what do you need to add to a plus b plus c to give you 4a plus 2b plus c? So what do you need to add to a plus b plus c to give you 4a plus 2b plus c? So it's just a plus 3a gives you 4a, b plus b gives you 2b, right? And then c is just c, 5a plus b. Good, guys. What about the last one? What do you have to add there? 7a plus b, good. Now, this is where things become really cool. Is, guys, what do you notice you have to add to go between these terms? What do you notice you need to add to go to each term in the differences? 2a, good. It's constant. It's a constant 2a. So guys, this is what you have to remember with quadratic sequences, is that the second difference is 2a. Then the first value of the first difference is 3a plus b. Then finally, you need to remember that the first number, the first value is just a plus b plus c. Guys, once you remember this, Honestly, quadratic sequences are so easy and they're worth three or four marks in the exam. But you're going to notice how simple it is, yeah? But you just need to remember these three things, yeah?